Yes, oh yes. Ten before the hour. This hour has been sponsored by Anonymous. Anonymous's message, Eric Prudent, is running for State Assembly District 98 in Wisconsin. The governor there has been destroying Wisconsin, drastically cutting education for the children, eliminating state income taxes on corporations. We urgently need to elect progressives like Eric Prudent to the State Assembly to stop Governor Walker. Please consider a small contribution. Check out Vote Prudent on Facebook or Twitter or at VotePrudent.com. Uh, let's go back to, uh, this, uh, uh, debate and, uh, listen to, uh, President Obama still speaking. George Bush never suggested that we eliminate funding for Planned Parenthood. So there are differences between Governor Romney and George Bush, but they're not on economic policy. In some ways, he's gone to a more extreme place when it comes to social policy. And I think that's a mistake. That's not how we're going to move our economy forward. I want to move you both along to the next question because it's in the same wheelhouse. So you you will uh, be able to respond. But uh, the president does get this question. I want to call on Michael Jones. Mr. President, I voted for you in 2008. What have you done or accomplished to earn my vote in 2012? I'm not that optimistic as I was in 2012. Most things I need for everyday living are very expensive. Well, we've gone through a tough four years. There's no doubt about it. But four years ago, I told the American people and I told you I would cut taxes for middle class families. And I did. I told you I'd cut taxes for small businesses. And I have. I said that I'd end the war in Iraq, and I did. I said we'd refocus attention on those who actually attacked us on 9-11. And we have gone after al-Qaeda's leadership like never before, and Osama bin Laden is dead. I said that we would put in place health care reform to make sure that insurance companies can jerk you around, and if you don't have health insurance, that you'd have a chance to get affordable insurance. And I have. I committed that I would rein in the excesses of Wall Street, and we passed the toughest Wall Street reforms since the 1930s. We've created 5 million jobs, gone from 800,000 jobs a month being lost, and we are making progress. We saved an auto industry that was on the brink of collapse. Now, does that mean you're not struggling? Absolutely not. A lot of us are. And that's why the plan that I put forward for manufacturing and education and reducing our deficit in a sensible way, using the savings from ending wars to rebuild America and putting people back to work, making sure that we are controlling our own energy, but not just the energy of today, but also the energy of the future. All those things will make a difference. So the point is, the commitments I've made, I've kept. And those that I haven't been able to keep, it's not for lack of trying, and we're going to get it done in a second term. But you should pay attention to this campaign because Governor Romney has made some commitments as well. And I suspect he'll keep those too. When members of the Republican Congress say we're going to sign a no-tax pledge so that we don't ask a dime for millionaires and millions to reduce our deficit so we can still invest in education and helping kids go to college, he said me too. When they said we're going to cut Planned Parenthood funding. He said, me too. When he said, we're going to repeal Obamacare, first thing I'm going to do, despite the fact that it's the same health care plan that he passed in Massachusetts and is working well, he said, me too. That is not the kind of leadership that you need, but you should expect that those are promises he's going to keep. Mr. And President, the choice let me of this let... election is going to be whose promises are going to be more likely to help you in your life, make sure your kids can go to college, make sure that you are getting a good paying job, making sure that Mr. Medicare President, and Social Security will be there for thank you. Thank you. Governor. I think you know better. I think you know that these last four years haven't been so good as the president just described and that you don't feel like you're confident that the next four years are going to be much better either. I can tell you that if you were to elect President Obama, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a repeat of the last four years. We just can't afford four more years like the last four years. He said that by now we'd have unemployment at 5.4 percent. 
The difference between where it is and 5.4 percent is 9 million Americans without work. I wasn't the one that said 5.4 percent. This was the president's plan. Didn't get there. He said he would have by now put forward a plan to reform Medicare and Social Security because he pointed out they're on the road to bankruptcy. He would reform them. He'd get that done. He hasn't even made a proposal on either one. He said in his first year he'd put out an immigration plan that would deal with our immigration challenges. Didn't even file it. This is a president who has not been able to do what he said he'd do. He said that he'd cut in half the deficit. He hasn't done that either. In fact, he doubled it. He said that by now, middle-income families would have a reduction in their health insurance premiums by $2,500 a year. It's gone up by $2,500 a year. And if Obamacare is passed or implemented, it's already been passed, if yeah, it's yeah, implemented yeah. fully, it'll be another 2500 on top. The middle class is getting crushed under the policies of a president who has not understood what it takes to get the economy working again. He keeps saying, look, I've created 5 million jobs. That's after lo losing 5 million jobs. The entire record is such that the unemployment has not been reduced in this country. The All right. unemployment, the number of people who are still looking for work is still 23 million. We're, uh, we're about uh, to take another break here. We only have another 30 minutes of this. So um, the consensus here at Malloy Central from She Who Must Be Obeyed is that we're going to continue. We're going to ride this uh, horse to the very end. As one of our listeners emailed me and said, well, most stations preempt your program anyway to carry this live. So, you know, all I can say to that is, uh, you know, so what's new? <laughs> we'll be back after the break and we're going to finish this up. So if, if this is bugging you, this might be a good time to go find something else to do. You know, what can I tell you? And uh, then we will uh, take some calls when this is over. Stay with us. I'm Mike Malloy.